late October brings the first truly cool days after a hot and dry summer. Leaves fall, plants have stopped sharing pollen and nectar with bees, the first week frosts have already occurred. Three weeks ago, young cordon workers began to work outside the hive. The temperature of 12 degrees Celsius allowed for safe flights. The sun warms tired and cooled workers if they just land on a sunny surface. They can fly if the wings muscle apparatus reaches a temperature of about 38 degrees. Before they soar into the air, the muscles tremble creating heat. The thermal imaging camera allows us to see how hot the bees are in relation to the surroundings. It is not warmth carried out from the hive, but their own generated by muscle movements. During the flight, the bee's body cools down, but the torso, together with the working muscles, keeps the temperature at about 40 degrees, even on cold days. This is clearly seen in the returning female workers who rest near the hive. The abdomen and legs are definitely cooler, even from the blasted wall. It cooled to 8 degrees. Bee flights stopped. They no longer risk leaving the hive. This is the temperature at which the bee remains motionless, loses its ability to move and after a certain time, if it is not heated, it dies. However, bees never fall into a real diapause inside the nest. The queens go on combs and some of them still lay eggs. Workers, however, eat them without allowing the appearance of larvae that would not be properly nourished and heated before winter. The ability of thermoregulation and active heat production by bees allows them to survive the winter at the expense of accumulated honey stocks. In the part of the hive where stocks are, the movement of bees is very lazy. Workers cordon together with carnel and very slowly move on the combs or remain motionless. The honey store will leave during the first deep chill. In the remaining part, free after hatching of the last brood, the bees crowded tightly into the so-called withers. In the center, they maintain a temperature higher than 25 degrees. The center is a reservoir of heat in case of rapid cooling. It gives the workers time to raise the temperature and fight the cold. In addition, they protect the queen from loss of fertility. Sperms that have accumulated in the sperm hopper die at a temperature lower than 15 degrees. The queen mother always moves within the limits of a part of the hive, heated by a bees. These areas can be seen well only with the help of a thermal imaging camera. The film shows the queen as she moves around the nest, still looking for cells to lay an egg. However, the workers effectively bother her, because a large number of them has entered the cells and there remains motionless. In classic hives it reduces surface and thus the speed of heat loss by the overwintering bee colony. The next swarm is in a slightly different situation. Its mother is on the lower frame, as in all other overwintering colonies. However, the queen late lay dozens of eggs. That's why this swarm must warm up the pupas which develops from them. The thermal imaging camera detects two areas of elevated temperature. In the winter months, this situation greatly strains the strength of bees. Now they must be on the alert and limit the activity to a minimum, otherwise they will not survive until spring. 